good morning, everyone. Um, very nice to uh, see you all gathered outside here as we make our re-entry to social relationships <laughs> and church. <laughs> but welcome, everyone, to this service. It won't be too long a service, but it will keep very much the theme of Mothering Sunday, of course, and uh, our flowers uh, for blessing and distribution later. If you'd like to repeat the uh, Kyrie's, the preparation for worship, and say after me, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the collect for this Mothering Sunday. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much to uh, Heather and David who now give us the two Bible readings set for today. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 19 verses 25 to 27. <clears throat> and that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Here in the letter. Moses was given a home in ancient Egypt. Jesus was part of the Holy Family. 
John cared for Mary when Jesus was crucified. Home is understood across the world and across history. In recent months, our homes have become many things. School rooms. First aid relief. 24 hour restaurants. Cinemas. And prisons. Let's remember mothers who have shared these difficult times, made them bearable and have given hope and encouragement. church and the world, please respond to the petition, Lord, in your mercy, by saying, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as a mother loves her child, so you loved us. For that great truth, we praise you. We pray for Christians locally, nationally, and throughout the world who cannot physically gather for worship today. We bring before you all those in this community who have asked for our prayers and who carry heavy burdens, and especially for those who are isolated and alone. That the Holy Spirit, who is everywhere present and fills all things, will comfort us and bind us together in faith, hope, and mutual love and support according to our means and circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
In our world turned upside down by the pandemic, we pray earnestly for those nations torn by conflict, violence and poverty, that they may see an end to their troubles. We pray for all who are in positions of leadership and policy makers in our church and government with difficult decisions to make on behalf of half of us all. Grant them wisdom and compassion and give them the knowledge, skills and support to enable us to continue leading safe and healthy lives. In the face of anxieties about the nation's economy and personal finances, we pray for creative ideas and wholesome action from those who have power to make changes which contribute to the common good. We pray also, Lord, for your guidance for those who are working hard on our diocesan reorganisation. May they bring about the changes which broaden the reach of your ministry, of your word, and the work of your church in these parishes. Bless our Archbishop Justin and our own clergy John, Susie and Joanna in their shepherding and nurturing roles as they hold us together in these uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.